podcast host the most benjamin dutill with the horror heathen youtube channel and the south jersey horror podcast today i have a very special guest sonova makuti lund who you all know as cecilia peterson in the movie saw 10 which is by far one of my favorite movies in the franchise now on my top five of the saw franchise and Sonova is a very, very beautiful and talented actress. I am not going to lie. I'm not going to hold that back on anybody. You can kiss my ass if you don't think she's talented. So, um, as we all know, she plays the, one of the main villains who does some really backstabbing shit on people for what her project in the movie. And, and nobody likes her character, but I understand why. <laughs> 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 it's just movies, people. It was written that way. Don't hate her in real life. So... Quick bio on you, which is very impressive. Um, you were born in Stord, Norway. I hope that's correct. Yeah. Um, you are a definitely an actress and a director known for I I can't pronounce this guy's name, but just the then the TV show Headhunters, I guess. Um, Ragnarok and Riviera. Uh, you are educated in literature, film, and documentary filmmaking. You have also worked as an editor and a film critic. Furthermore, you are an author as well. That is fantastic. Do you have anything published that you can talk about real quick? Hey, I've published one novel <laughs> eight years ago. Uh, and I'm I'm trying now like to give out one more before it's gone 10 years. Maybe I, I release it when it's 10 years since the first one. Well, congratulations. I'm working, I'm working too much, so it's it's hard. Writing is something you really need to sit down and have a lot of time, at least I do. I do not have the patience to write anything because <laughs> my I get distracted too easily. I, I, ah, I, I, know. I don't know, but it's... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm not structured. I'm not like one of these who gets up at five in the morning and sits and writes. I'm, I'm just like, I, I need to be inspired. And then, so I haven't been... I can be inspired now, but it's for five minutes, and then I move on to something else. So it's it's quite hot, but but no, it's, it takes uh, me it, <laughs> it takes me ten years to write a paragraph. I understand. So <laughs> you began your acting career as the lead role in the internationally success feature film Headhunters, directed by the Oscar nominated director Morton. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm so sorry. Dildum. Yeah. Okay. You got it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you started the sequel of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, uh, which is called The Girl with the Spider's Web, in a supporting role in 2018 in the Polish crime series Illegals. Mm. You were, furthermore, a regular in the TV series Acquitted Seasons 1 and 2, which is a huge hit in Scandinavia, which I understand. Yeah. Um, and it was selected by the Hollywood Reporter's Top 10 Must See TV Shows. You are in one of the lead roles in the Scandinavian co-produced TV series Black Widows Seasons 1 and 2, a remake of the successful Finland original. You performed in the lead role in the thriller Haunted by director Carl Christian... Mm, I'm so sorry if I butchered his name. Robert. Robert. Oh, thank you. Thank you mm. so much, because I would have got it. I, I couldn't <laughs> guess how to say it right. Mm. And you received outstanding reviews. So, like I said, quite the impressive resume. I am so glad you're here today. I am super honored because you were fantastic in the movie. I don't care what anyone says. Um, you Are they saying so much job. bad things? I don't hear that. <laughs> but I'm sure that I've when I when I when I made the announcement on social media that I'm interviewing you, people were like, "Oh my gosh, she's such a bad person." I'm like, "It's how it's written. She can't control that. It's what she does." <laughs> That's get angry about what you do. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. why are you getting angry at her? It, it's just what she was supposed to do in the movie. Yeah. Don't be angry with her. I mean, come on now. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I'm the script so writer. Mm. So, Saw 10, such a fantastic film, just came out um, a couple months ago. 
Um, I had to go watch it in theater and uh, the day of release because uh, me and my girlfriend, we love the Saw franchise. And the movie was really good. You did such an excellent job playing the villain. Um, I loved how you performed so well. Your your, your acting is, is paramount. I'm not going to lie. That's just my opinion. So It is a very interesting character to play as well because she has so many faces. You need to keep your tongue straight because you need to be persuasive when she's warm and professional. And you, so there are many steps. You really need to plan the whole thing very uh, detailed uh, and not give away too much along the way, you know. So it's, it's um, but that's what's fun. And that's why uh, villains are also very interesting to play because they're very often conceiving stuff. So, so for me, it was a was a real treat. I've played some some uh, some bad bad guys uh, after I turned forty. Uh, it's it's uh, fantastic because you don't you're not just playing the girlfriend or someone in love. You're actually playing someone complex and interesting. So, so I think it's I had a blast doing it. Yeah, that I mean, it's like it's misdirection. <laughs> <laughs> You go from the sweet person to help John in the beginning, and at the mm. end, you screw him over by taking his money and lying to him. So, yeah. <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, so, is, she is horrible. She truly is. So how, how did you hear about the role of Cecilia Peterson? I was... Uh... My agents were contacted by uh, contacted by the producers, uh, and I was uh, was actually offered the part straight away. There was no audition or or a self tape or or anything. Uh, these guys uh, shoot from the hip, quite. Uh, they work quickly, and uh, and they know what they want, and they know what they are doing. So it was a really quick process after some talks with uh, Mark and Oren and some small negotiations regarding the contract we were ready to go uh, just like in a month or something after we talked and I had not seen any of the Saw films before uh, but like you said I used to work as a film critic <clears throat> earlier as a journalist and a film critic so I knew um, that the Saw franchise was one of the biggest and one of the more maybe intellectually challenging concepts. So I I was in. I, I knew that this would be a great thing to join. So there was no question for me. And also when when the character was, the part was so big and also interesting, it, it was a very easy decision to make. Well, I'm glad they chose you because they could have picked a better person to play Cecilia Peterson. I mean, you did it so well. You, you had me convinced that you were an actual villain in real life. I mean, so, <laughs> so what inspired you to audition for the role, and why? Like I said, I did. I did not audition, so I just got okay. this offer, and so it was up to me uh, to say yes or no. And uh, so there was no audition. I was just offered the part. Hmm. So cast director is like, hey, I want her. Forget the audition. Just stick her straight in the movie. Is what happened. Yeah, at at some point, you know, in your career, you usually we we audition for everything. You know, at least for me, I've I've on, um, I've been working abroad for the last uh, eight years. Uh, so if it's auditions, it's I I don't go to auditions in Norway. I'm I'm just working abroad. So then it's a lot of self tapes and and competition and stuff like that, you know. But um, but at a certain level, you can't be so lucky that the producers and the directors kind of okay. If we get her, then we are happy about that. And uh, so this was one of those which which is very comfortable because then you can just kind of you don't need to be tested or to prove anything on beforehand. They know that you can act, so you don't need to prove that. It's more, it's more about uh, if you yourself think that this is something that you're up to and and able to make interesting, and they trust that. So so then it's, yeah, uh, I, I I love that. I love to kind of just not prove everything. You know, I started to act when I was thirty four years old, which is not 
too long as 12 years, you know. So I haven't, I haven't been doing this my whole life in a way. Uh, so I maybe very often feel that I need to prove all the time that I'm I'm fit for this game. Uh, so I I love the fact that they just <laughs> phoned us and, and asked if I wanted to join. It was nice. Uh, that's a good answer. I love the answer. I'm speechless with that answer. Um, like I said, it, I'm, they went through gut feeling and it was it was the right feeling. So. Mm. Um, when you first received the script of the movie and after you read it, were you excited or were you scared? I was not scared. Um, I was excited because I thought this character was very interesting. Uh, and I was excited mainly because I could sense that this movie was a saw movie that anyone could watch with some kind of pleasure or entertainment uh, value in it. You did not need to be a deadpan saw fan to, 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 to enjoy it or to be interested in it because I had not seen too much, you know, I, I was browsing a bit, but, but I could sense that it, it was, I would place it like, uh, like, you know, I, I love these films. There is a franchise and as a film critic, I love these films where you kind of go back in time, like Batman begins or Casino Royale, where you kind of learn why has the hero become what he is? Why is his purpose this or that? And you get some kind of emotional origin to why he's doing what he's doing. And I feel that Saw 10 is, is uh, something like that. Uh, you you go back and you understand why, why John Tr Kramer is doing this. Uh, so I love that. I really love that. And I also love that. Yeah, talking about Batman Begins, that that the Cecilia character is a bit like the Joker in a way. She questions John's method. She questions the whole concept of the whole franchise, really. Uh, and I I really love that that she she would kind of kind of scrutinize his whole vision and and ethics and and uh, and code. Uh, and and uh, test him, so I I really love that. Definitely an integral part in the movie. Um, it's just like the whole time hop thing. It, it, it's confusing at first, and then because my girlfriend, she's like the salt expert. If I have a question about salt, I ask her. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and she's like, um, my girlfriend loves the salt franchise. She's an expert at everything, and I have to ask her. So where in the timeline does this movie fit in? She's like. Right yeah. after the first one, I'm like really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where it fits. I'm like, okay, if you say so. So, yeah. um, yeah, between one and one and two, like it's one and a half. Yeah, uh, what's saw one point five? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <all right. laughs> so. It should be then. Yeah. So, were there any scenes that were too difficult for you to film? No. Not really. For me, when acting in English, it's sometimes hard when when I have four pages of dialogue to, you know, phone calls or whatever, where I'm just like ranting on. Uh, that can be hard to learn and hard to make fluent and hard to find the rhythm in that. Um, so that's always something that I, I need to learn every line or every dialogue or every scene so by heart that nothing can kind of uh, disturb me. Uh, so that's where the hard work lies for me being uh, Norwegian, you know. Um, but like any scenes in particular, I wouldn't say that. I had, I struggled a bit actually when I was supposed to hit Amanda because of course we have stunt people and we rehearse and, but it became, um, quite clear that I was not very, <laughs> very good at this punch like this you you this masculine punch where you where you're really direct and you go back quickly I was like even Stephen Brand he just started to laugh at set when I, I was rehearsing for it because you really haven't hit much have you or punched much have you ah, <laughs> not like that so we struggled a bit with that but the stunt guy and me we then came up with if, do you want to try to do like this instead? And I said, yeah, we could try that. 
and of course it's embarrassing to stand there and not not look persuasive when you're you're uh, trying to hit someone so we tried that and that worked much better for me then i then i got to use my whole bad body and and do it more naturally um so i think that was yeah that scene that hit was we worked a bit on that but i think it worked good in the end and it felt very natural and kind of satisfying <laughs> not just, <laughs> nothing to do with surely we're the best of friends but it felt nice to hit actually it was okay <laughs> It's, it's like one of those, I'm tired of your shenanigan slap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, besides your character in the film, um, if there's any other person that you could be in the film, who would it be and why? Oh, we, we really work ourselves so into our parts that, it, of course, Tobin Bell's character is really intriguing and and uh, the heart of the film or the most interesting thing. But I, as a woman, I think Amanda's part is very, it's very profound. It's very, her struggle, her inner landscape is very interesting and complex, I think. So, so I guess I would have had, as a person, an actress, I, I would have loved to explore that as well because I and I think there are some very good scenes in the movie as well where she shows that and the relationship between them is also yeah interesting I think hmm. I think being the assistant to John Kramer would be one of my dream jobs <laughs> he's so sweet he had so many nice I heard I've heard Tom Bell is one of the greatest people to work with yeah. that's what I heard he is um, such a nice guy. And he and I, we talk back on social media all the time, and he's just one of the greatest guys to speak to. He, mm. he is one of the most, he's one of the most delicate people I've ever talked to in my life. Mm. And it's, it's yeah. great. I mean, this is why I love speaking to actors, because what you see on film is completely different than what you see in real life. Mm. And when someone is not behind the camera, he's like doing dialogue and reading the scripts, it's, it, it's like a, it's a complete 180. You have no idea what's going on. No, so no. It, it's fantastic. I mean, I love the horror community because and there are people many, who are so relaxed. Yeah, and many of us are are actually quite modest and shy, you know. Um, people often get surprised that so many actors are quite shy or maybe socially awkward, but that's 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 why we can kind of feel <laughs> feel a lot of stuff, you know. We are we are observers maybe and we we don't really always do the right thing in real life in the right situation but we love the fact when we can rehearse and we can have a script and we can make it perfect at least for me that's what i love it's like because sometimes you you kind of oh i should have said that i should have done that you know oh my god i'm sorry but in acting it's like you know what to do and you can just tweak and tweak and tweak until it that's the perfect scene, you know. So actors are are not necessarily big, grand, uh, yeah, glorious people. We are very normal and okay, human. So um, I asked my girlfriend if she can ask one question during the interview, what would she, what would she be able to ask you? And it's the last question, really. It says, if you could put Jigsaw in one of his own traps from this movie, which one would it be? I saw that question. I was like, oh, my God. Like Cecilia, like if I'm Cecilia Peterson or if I'm Cinema. <laughs> it's like, as Cecilia, as your, as your character. Uh, maybe. maybe as a film critic. I think it would be, be interesting that if he's put in one of his most advanced traps, and it doesn't work kind of uh it kind of <laughs> just does not work the way he's planned it so he would be very irritated by that fact and there was no time code he, he would just be tortured like you know in in the wrong way endlessly i think that would be would would um be a torment for to for not for tobin but for john kramer that his plan didn't work 
and that it just kept on hurting in the in the wrong manner and it does it didn't depend on whatever he did i think that would would kill him inside <laughs> i think i was i was i was i was thinking that i was assuming that you would say the same trap that he put you in with the with the with the mustard gas and because your, your death was the, the, the least brutal in my opinion so yeah or... <laughs> i had a, had an easy one and and uh i did not die either yeah, so, so no, we'll yeah see. i think yours yours is the most brutal one i want to see you in, in another saw movie the comeback of cecilia peterson like yeah you come back like saw Lev is like all right john you messed up now it's my turn so or something, <laughs> something like that mm. but i figured you put him in the same trap that he put you in that would have been my answer but you know your answer is more better than a more lap of the mind so um <laughs> um okay down the last five minutes of the interview and this has been fantastic i've had a lot of fun talking to you um is there any upcoming movies or projects that you're allowed to talk about so i can help promote on my social media oh i would love to but i uh, i cannot i am um i'm doing a a fantasy project after christmas but i don't think i'm allowed to say what it is okay yet okay yeah. Totally they understand. There's the, there's rules. I get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank I know you. it's late. I know, I know it's late during your way, and I know you, it's there's a big time difference. And I really do appreciate you doing this for me. Oh, you're the one having the hard time. It's early in the morning for you, isn't it? It's eight thirty in the morning. I, I usually get up around seven in the morning. Oh. Take my dogs out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, the boys and girls, the nice. saw fans everywhere, the beautiful, the talented, the wonderful, Savoni McCoolie-Loon, I really appreciate it, and thank you so much for taking the time. I wish you the best, and have a wonderful weekend. And I will continue to follow you on social media, and I do love the behind-the-scenes pictures you post on Instagram, by the way. Those are great. Um, absolutely love them. Um, we had so much fun. <laughs> You have a wonderful weekend, and one day I am going to go to Norway. It's on my bucket list. So, um, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>